Hello you guys and welcome to another one of our series Clueless Girl Gaming on Linux As I mentioned before, now I'm actually starting to establish things Now I'm starting to do things We are going to be having a first look into Linux Mint which is my first platform or my first distro after the horrendous Ubuntu. Don't judge me on that, I love Ubuntu very much, but it's uh, basically no good for gaming. What I decided to do is install Linux Mint and I wanted to give you guys a good first look into everything. As I must have already mentioned, the installation process of Linux Mint was basically but then girl kind of forgot about a couple of things so yeah and footage also forgot about girl regardless uh, let us just continue with everything else i'm currently installing a couple of updates to the system just so we make sure that everything is up and running and let's just check a linux mint eh? so guys <laughs> The time has come for me to try out another distro and as you know, what is that cable? As you know, I tried Ubuntu, liked it very much as a user that has nothing to do with gaming and then wiped everything clean and installed Linux Mint instead because uh, Linux Mint has the name Linux which kind of makes me feel a little better about myself. First look. so. And what I didn't notice before is that right over here, the installation prompt of Linux Mint was hidden away and the uh, girl did not see it. <laughs> I didn't really end, end up installing it. And so basically all of my footage and all of my installation of Lutris and everything else just failed because in the end I just didn't have enough space to run it because I was installing everything on the USB stick. Anyway, now we are starting off a clean slate. Everything looks clean. I like it very much. Um, it looks professional. I like their logo. Actually, it's really clean. And the screen is quite clean. I can't wait to see and jump into the background pictures. That would be quite fun. Clean as well, uh, icons wise. Why, why is this not moving? This is, this is giving me, this is legitimately annoying me. I can't move the icons like that. Okay then, okay. Well, as you can see, I have a couple of tabs open, including OBS. This is pretty much the only program that I have installed so far. The installation of OBS was quite easy. We'll be installing a little bit of Steam, a little bit of Lutris, a little bit of games, hopefully, without my memory crashing again, <laughs> and we'll be able to see everything uh, we have so far. So, basically, home directory um, right here is where you can open it up, and what we're seeing here is a couple of things, really neat, desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, whatever you may want to have, public, templates, for your usage, everything is green and black, which is quite nice on the eyes. Maybe it will be better for people that have some trouble seeing color correctly or some colorblind people that don't really do well with the reds and oranges. But I'm sure that you can change everything and customize it regardless. N needless to say, I kind of quite like how it looks like with the black and the green. Everything is pretty sleek. Um, you can see everything for dummies over here on the side, just in case you kind of get lost from this directory, documents, downloads, music, pictures, into this directory, which is also desktop documents, music, pictures. I am so happy. Recents and the file system, these are the most important things. The trash, oh my God, the trash. I have to tell you, there is no such thing as looking for the trash or recycle bin in Arch Linux or Ubuntu. They are non-existent. As a Windows user, when I open the home directory and the files and I see the trash right away, this is like my holy grail. This, this is everything my people have been singing about. This is everything that I wanted to see. So thank you very much Linux Mint for actually putting in the time and effort to make a small little icon and connect the directory to the home directory called Trash. Thank you, you're amazing. Network as well, you can see uh, all of the available networks, I suppose, a Windows network that is connected to currently, <clears throat> which is quite neato. 
Unable to mount location. Never mind. Stop giving me scares, Linux Mint. Also, another difference, amazing difference to Ubuntu is that you can actually click on the separate tabs. This already looks to me a hell lot more like Windows than it does Ubuntu. Ubuntu did not have this option. Its original uh, way of showing the taskbar was also on the top, which is completely well. Why is it on the top? I have no idea. And also the icons that you had here in terms of customization and clickability, you didn't basically have. You had only one click field and you just basically could not select any of the icons that were separate, it was just like everything bashed all together. If you know what I, if you don't know what I mean, you can just check out the video I did on Ubuntu. So uh, basically what I have here else is uh, my menu, my amazing menu. And again, I don't know how I can express it. Thanks you, thanks you, thanks you so much Linux Mint. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much Linux Mint for actually making this possible. This is amazing. You see Firefox web browser. You see your software manager. You see your system settings. You see your terminal. You see your files. You see your lock screen. You see your logout. And you see your quit manager to shut down the computer. Why is it so hard for other distributions to have this aligned? This to me reads just like Windows. This to me is exactly how I'm used to having things and this is exactly for me personally how I can navigate super 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 easy. I don't know who came up with it but it's so good to just have the menus laid out here just in case you get confused or something you remember the icons everything is just so well interwoven I cannot stress this enough this is so good. Uh, with Ubuntu, yes, it had the options, but it didn't have anything like the software manager set up on the pin start. Or it didn't have the system settings, for instance. Lock screen, logout, and quit were also there, but not as visible as it is right here. I feel like this distribution already, uh, I can say for sure about it, that it's probably going to be good for people that are not that well versed in different operating systems. And I feel like this is gonna be super, super easy to just tell them, these are your icons. If you get stuck, you can always go to the, one of these icons, you will get unstuck. That's it, you don't need any more. Now, everything else, um, you can see uh, all applications, the accessories, the graphics, the internet, office, sound and video administration preferences, places, recent files. I mean, it's so easy, man. It, it's just so easy to just go and hop, skip, jump into a file manager and just feel safe about it. One of my pet peeves with Ubuntu and Arch was just the fact that everything was, I'm just speculating here, in their wishes to be a bit more unique in comparison to other distros. I feel like Arch and Ubuntu were trying too hard to distinguish themselves and put things on different places or make things a little more customizable but not customized what I mean is when you boot it you you don't see it as you would wish to see it you have to customize it yourself now this is an option that is super good for anyone who is genuinely interested in Linux and in any Linux distribution but there are people that just want to use Linux for their documents and for accessing the internet and working online so they don't need all of this stuff. They just need something that's already pre-customized for them that they can just boot and it's that easy. So in that term, oh my God, Linux Mint is amazing. And I just want to see, change desktop background. Just like in Windows, you can change your background from here. So let us see. We have <clears throat> different logos, Linux Mint. It, it's looking quite computery, but, uh, but I like it. I don't mind it. Everything is clean. Ooh, this is so nice. This is so nice. I like this so much. Liana, let's see. These are, these are a bit more feminine, I suppose. 
Um, we have quite a few images to choose from for the people that like to customize things and oh it's Japan I like it I used to take you so like it already but um, let's uh, do some justice and do some justice hmm. let's just leave it at the beach maybe I like the beach and it's summer now and I'm in beach mood okay in beach mood mm -hmm. And here you also have the settings where you can choose a color, picture aspect, slideshow, if you want it. Well done Linux Mint. I love this. This is so good. This is so easy to use. This is so good. Honestly, I am super hyped about this distribution. Um, the only thing that kind of annoys me, I just can't move my icons because I suppose that that's the way they stay. Yeah, okay. Okay. I can't just, yeah, regardless, that's the only thing that kind of annoys me because what if I want a clean desktop? What if I don't want any icons on my desktop? What if I just want them over here to just pin them down? Then um, I'm sure there's an option that I'm too dumb to know about hiding these away. But to be quite frank with you, it already, like this is such a minor, minute detail that it has nothing to do with anything. The desktop environment is amazing and unlike Ubuntu it didn't take the system too much time to install. There was no crashes in the meanwhile. I literally just booted the live environment and I installed it from there which I think is amazing because it gives you a bit of a preview. If you have it on a USB stick obviously it gives it a little bit of a preview so maybe you can teach someone how to work with Linux Mint before you even install it and they can see if they actually like it, which is another amazing plus. Um, by the way, this video is not sponsored by Linux Mint, you guys, that's, my just, that's just my honest opinion of a clueless girl who's never used Linux before and only installed two distributions so far, Arch Linux and Ubuntu. Honestly, I have uh, nothing to, nothing bad to say at least. I want to see if I can customize maybe the, the panels. Can I customize the panels? Yeah, I can. Amazing. I can make them smaller or bigger, the font size as well. Add new panels as well. Wow. Okay. Panel edit mode. Ooh, that's so sweet. That's amazing and I, I presume you can just add additional things here on the bottom and here you also have all of your removable devices, your printers, your notifications. I'm getting so excited here. Um, yeah, that's so good. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. Honestly, honestly, and you can you can just switch the panels. Look at that. That's so good. That's so good. I love that. So you have a bunch of customization options, icon size you can change as well, but you can't just drag and drop the icons because Linux Mint does not allow for that. But everything else is just awesome, you guys. I, I literally have nothing to say, nothing bad to say about Linux Mint. I am only worried about the performance, how it will be like when I have a bunch of things open apart from OBS, just like Steam and maybe Lutris updating in background, downloading something. I just want to see how that works out and uh, most importantly I want to see how it runs during gaming. So is it gaming approved is the big question here and we are going to have to see that and we will have to investigate into this because that is something that we'll have to solve on our own. Anyway, this you guys was my amazing reveal of Linux Mint. I legitimately have nothing bad to say about this distro. The only thing, the only problem I ever had was not being able to drag and drop the icons on the desktop, which I'm sure is not that much of a big deal for the majority of the users, but I like it minimalistic. I like installing some things to just not have nothing on the background itself. So not actually have any icons and instead just pin the icons down to the taskbar. But regardless of that, <clears throat> as I said, there's probably an option that I didn't even, I didn't even think about. But um, apart from that, you guys, this is amazing. This distro is 
absolutely awesome honestly i have nothing bad to say about it i will highly recommend it both installation wise as well as usage wise from what i just saw everything just looks so easy everything is just intuitive while ubuntu and arch linux were not that intuitive in these terms that you would be able to use things easy and they would already be customized for you versus you having to customize them after you've installed it and you've gone through the process itself. This is a no-brainer to me and I love this distro already and I hope that it doesn't crash and burn just like the other two. Well, just like Ubuntu, honestly, because Arch Linux didn't crash and burn at all. So uh, the next episode will be all about us installing Steam, Lutris and maybe a couple of games. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how we go in the time frame. So, I hope you guys stay tuned. If you want to stay tuned, then just subscribe to us. Follow us on our beautiful channel, EFTech Made Simple. If you have some love for me, share the love with me. Give me a like, give me a share, give me, give me anything you want to give, give me. Everything is fine with me. Thank you so much for spending your time watching this video. I hope you truly enjoyed it and I'll see you in the future. Have a wonderful day. Bye.